Melis Zanawi is Reis to Grinya. Malas Zanawi Azras, pronounced MLS Nawi ASRs. Listen, birth name Lagess Zanawi is Reis. The 9th of May 1955 to the 20th of August 2012 was the Prime Minister of Ethiopia from 1995 to his death in 2012. From 1989, he was the chairman of the Tigray People's Liberation Front (TPLF) and the head of the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front (EPRDF) since its formation in 1991. Before becoming Prime Minister in 1995, he served as President of the Transitional Government of Ethiopia from 1991 to 1995. In 1975, he left Haile Selassie I University to join the TPLF and oppose the Derg. After the overthrow of the Derg's military government, he was elected as President of the Transitional Government and later as Prime Minister. He has lifted his country from the ruins of civil war and transformed it into one of Africa's fastest growing economies. Early life and education Melis was born in ADWA, Tigray, in northern Ethiopia, to an Ethiopian father Zanawi Israys from ADWA and Alemash Gwebrelul from Adi Kuala, Eritrea. He was the third of six children. His first name at birth was Lages, thus Lages Zanawi, Gies, Lages Zanawi. However, he eventually became better known by his nom de guerre Melis, which he adopted in honor of university student and fellow Tigrayan Melis Tekel who was executed by Mengistu's government in 1975. He received primary education at Queen of Sheba Junior School located in ADWA. It took him five years to complete the regular eight years program as he was able to skip grades and join the next level. He then joined the prestigious General Wingate High School in Addis Ababa on full scholarship and completed high school in 1972. <laughs> Early political career <laughs> Ethiopian Civil War 1974 After high school, Melis studied medicine at Addis Ababa University at the time known as Haile Selassie University for two years before dropping out his studies in 1974 to join other students and form Tigrayan National Organization TNO, the forerunner TPLF in Dedebit, Tigray. Aragawi Berhe, a former member of the TPLF, notes that historians John Young and Jenny Hammond vaguely indicated Melis as founder TPLF in their books. Aragawi insists that both he and Sabat Niga joined the front months after it was founded. While a member of the TPLF, Melis established the Marxist-Leninist League of Tigray MLLT. TPLF was one of armed groups struggling against Lt. Col. Mengistu Haile Mariam and the Derg, the junta which lead Ethiopia under Iron Fist from 1974 to 1991. Melis was elected member of the Leadership Committee in 1979 and chairman of the Executive Committee of TPLF in 1983. He was the chairperson of both the TPLF and the EPRDF after the EPRDF assumed power at the end of the Ethiopian Civil War in 1991. He was president of the Transitional Government of Ethiopia TGE, during which Eritrea seceded from the country and a federal government that is based on representing the nation and nationality of the country started. Topic. Presidency of Ethiopia 1991-1995 Topic. Domestic affairs Melis stated that EPRDF's victory was a triumph for the thousands of TPLF fighters who were killed, for the millions of Ethiopians who were victims of the country's biggest famine during the Derg regime, when some estimates put up to 1.5 million deaths of Ethiopians from famine and the Red Terror. Accordingly, he maintained that the big support it received from peasants and rural areas helped EPRDF maintain peace and stability. Foreign support was diverse, the Arab League, as well as Western nations, supported the EPRDF rebels against the communist Moscow-supported government although the TPLF was at the time Marxist at the height of the Cold War. What the implications of this will be in terms of relations between Ethiopia and the European Union, we will have to wait and see but I don't think you will be surprised if Ethiopia were to insist that it should not be patronized. 
The United States facilitated peace talks between different rebel groups including EPRDF and the DERG to bring an end to civil war which lasted for 17 years and reach some kind of political settlement in 1991. The talks didn't bear any fruit as EPRDF's force were moving to the capital and Mengistu fled the country. The United States agreed to support the EPRDF, which would have, nevertheless, seized power without anyone's support. Many angry demonstrators in Addis Ababa reacted to this by protesting against Herman Cohen, the U.S. State Department's chief of African affairs, who attended a conference that demonstrators viewed as legitimizing the EPRDF. In July 1991, Convention of Nationalities was held. It was the first Ethiopian multinational convention where delegates of various nations and organizations were given fair and equal representation and observed by various international organizations including the United Nations, Organization for African Unity, European Economic Community, and the United States and the United Kingdom. Foreign affairs Although Melis and his administration claimed they preferred a united but federal state that included the Eritrean state, since Melis TPLF fought together with EPLF, Melis originally left the decision to the Eritrean citizens in the hope that the independence referendum would vote against secession, according to Time magazine's 1991 analysis. However, after the EPLF secured their borders when Mengistu's regime fell, and after the majority of Eritreans voted for independence on 24 May 1993, Isaiah Zafawerka became the leader of Eritrea. Many in the Meli's administration, as well as opposition parties were angry over the decision to grant Eritrea its independence. Despite working together against the Derg regime, Meli's and Afawerka's positive relationship turned sour after Meli's succumbed to U.S. pressure to hold an election within a year, but Afawerka abandoned his original promise to create a transitional government in the early 1990s. The Eritrean Ethiopian War began in May 1998 following the Eritrean troops' invasion of Badmi and parts of Shararo Waredas. Following the invasion Ethiopia demanded that the Eritrean troops leave the invaded areas completely. However, President Afwerki of Eritrea refused to pull out. Then the Ethiopians responded with huge counter, offensive measures which subsequently lead to the capture of the disputed Badmi area and most parts of western Eritrea. Ethiopian President Nagaso Gadada gave a victory speech and a peace treaty was signed a few weeks later. According to the peace treaty Ethiopia then pulled out of the Eritrean territory. Though Ethiopian troops controlled Badmi, after an international court ruled that Badmi belonged to Eritrea, Ethiopia continued to maintain a presence of Ethiopian soldiers in the town. <laughs> Premiership of Ethiopia 1995 <laughs> <laughs> Domestic affairs Foreign <laughs> affairs <laughs> 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 Melis moved to have Ethiopia gain a larger share of the Nile River water. Part of this entailed using Ethiopia's hydropower prospects as leverage in exporting power to Egypt, amongst others. He had also aided the Sudan People's Liberation Army, movement prior to South Sudan's independence as the rebels fought the government in Khartoum. Since the war on terrorism, Melis sought to consolidate Ethiopia's hegemony in East Africa, including his mediation efforts with Sudan and South Sudan, as well as stabilizing Somalia towards the end of the mandate of the transitional federal government. Though he had controversially sent troops to fight against the Islamic Courts Union, since 2009 he had been praised for working towards a stable situation along with the African Union. Topic. Eritrea. Topic. Somalia After a threat on an invasion of Ethiopia, Melis declared war on the ICU. In 2006, the Islamic Courts Union assumed control of much of the southern part of Somalia and promptly imposed Sharia law. The transitional federal government sought to re-establish its authority, and, with the assistance of Ethiopian troops, African Union peacekeepers and air support by the United States, managed to drive out the rival ICU. On 8 January 2007, as the Battle of Ras Kamboni raged, TFG President and founder Abdullahi Yusuf Ahmed, a former colonel in the Somali army, entered Mogadishu for the first time since being elected to office. The Somali government then relocated to Villa Somalia in the capital from its interim location in Baidoa. 
This marked the first time since the fall of the Siad Bar regime in 1991 that the federal government controlled most of the country. In October 2011, a coordinated multinational operation began against al-Shabaab in southern Somalia, with the Ethiopian military eventually joining the mission the following month. According to Ramtane Lamamra, the O Commissioner for Peace and Security, the additional Ethiopian and O Troop reinforcements are expected to help the Somali authorities gradually expand their territorial control. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Climate change. Melis played an important role in developing the African Union's position on climate change since 2009 and was a friend of the chair at the 15th Conference of the Parties COP15 to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change UNFCCC. On the 31st of August 2009, Melis was appointed chair of the African Heads of State and Government on Climate Change CAHOSCC. The group had been established following the 4th of February 2009 decision at the 12th O Assembly of Heads of States to build a common Africa position on climate change in preparations for COP15 prior to Meli's appointment. But in light of the AU's decision and the Algiers Declaration on the African Common Platform to Copenhagen on the 19th of May 2009, the Africa Group made a submission to the UNFCCC that included demands for 67 billion dollars per year in finance for adaptation funding. And and $200 billion per year for mitigation and set targets in terms of reductions of emissions by developed countries, not by reference to temperature. On 3 September 2009, Melis made a speech to the Africa Partnership Forum, where he said, We will never accept any global deal that does not limit global warming to the minimum unavoidable level, no matter what levels of compensation and assistance are promised to us. While we will reason with everyone to achieve our objective, we will not rubber stamp an agreement by the powers that be as the best we could get for the moment. We will use our numbers to delegitimize any agreement that is not consistent with our minimal position. If needs be we are prepared to walk out of any negotiations that threaten to be another rape of our continent. Death In July 2012, questions arose concerning Meli's health when he did not attend African Union summit meetings in Addis Ababa. Opposition groups claimed that Meli's may have already died on 16 July while undergoing treatment in Belgium. However, Deputy Prime Minister Hila Mariam Dessalane attributed Meli's absence to a minor illness. A press conference, during which the government planned to clarify Meli's health status, was scheduled for 18 July but postponed until later in the week. While the government acknowledged that Melis had been hospitalized, it stated that his condition was not serious. There were further rumors of his death when he was not seen in public after the 2012 G20 summit and at the time of the death of the head of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, Abuna Paulos. On 20 August, Melis Zanawi died after contracting an infection in Belgium, Minister of Information Bereket Simon announced on state television. It's a sad day for Ethiopia. The man who led our country for the past 21 years and brought economic and democratic changes, has died. We have lost our respected leader. Melis has been receiving treatment abroad. He was getting better and we were expecting him to return to Addis Ababa. But he developed a sudden infection and died around 11.40 p.m. last night. His body will be returned to Ethiopia soon. We have set up a committee to organize his funeral. More information will be released about that soon. As per Ethiopian law, Hila Mariam Dessalane has now taken over the leadership. He will also be in charge of the Ethiopian military and all other government institutions. I would like to stress, nothing in Ethiopia will change. The government will continue. Our policies and institutions will continue. Nothing will change in Ethiopia. Dessalane will be confirmed by parliament. After his body was repatriated two days later, thousands of mourners congregated on streets from the airport to Meli's former residence to pay their last respects as his coffin, draped in the flag of Ethiopia, was accompanied by a military band. The event was attended by political, military and religious leaders, as well as diplomats and his wife, Azeb Mesfin. The body will lie in state and the funeral date set is arranged. A declaration of national mourning was also issued. 
There were also fears of a power vacuum after his death, as well as a possible detriment to Eritrea Ethiopian relations. Meliz's funeral took place in Addis Ababa on 2 September 2012 in a religious ceremony attended by at least 20 African presidents and thousands of Ethiopians gathered in Mescal Square. Reactions Political leaders, states and institutions offered their thoughts on Melis following his death. Olympic gold medalist Haile Gebrselassie praised Melis' achievements. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon praised Melis' exceptional leadership. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office issued a statement that read, Netanyahu presented his condolences to the Ethiopian people. Melis was loved in his country. He was also a true friend of Israel. During his mandate Ethiopia became one of Israel's closest friends." Prime Minister David Cameron called Melis, "...an inspirational spokesman for Africa." President Barack Obama released the statement, It was with sadness that I learned of the passing of Prime Minister Melis Zanawi of Ethiopia. Prime Minister Melis deserves recognition for his lifelong contribution to Ethiopia's development, particularly his unyielding commitment to Ethiopia's poor. I met with Prime Minister Melis at the G8 summit in May and recall my personal admiration for his desire to lift millions of Ethiopians out of poverty through his drive for food security. I am also grateful for Prime Minister Melis's service for peace and security in Africa, his contributions to the African Union, and his voice for Africa on the world stage. On behalf of the American people, I offer my condolences to Prime Minister Meli's family and to the people of Ethiopia on this untimely loss, and confirm the U.S. government's commitment to our partnership with Ethiopia. Going forward, we encourage the government of Ethiopia to enhance its support for development, democracy, regional stability and security, human rights and prosperity for its people. President Lee Myung Bak released this statement. The passing of Prime Minister Meli's is being mourned across the globe. We all have just lost a great leader of Ethiopia and a preeminent advocate for Africa and the developing world. I pray for the repose of a truly bright mind who lived an intense and moving life, my close friend." Western NGOs Amnesty International called for the new administration to end Meli's ever-increasing repression and Human Rights Watch similarly added that the next administration should repeal the 2009 anti-terrorism law. As the New York Times asked about a gap between the United States of America's strategic and ideological goals in relation to its support for Melly's government, it quoted HRW researcher Leslie Lefko as saying, There is an opportunity here. If donors are shrewd, they will use the opportunity that this presents to push a much stronger and bolder human rights stance and need for reform. Author Dan Connell, who had interviewed Melly's in June, said that, he seemed focused then on wrapping up a number of major projects as if he were aware the end was near. Melis knew his days were numbered. The Committee to Protect Journalists cited and criticized the secrecy around Melis' death. The Washington Post said that the circumstances of his death remained laced with intrigue. Regional groups responded with the Agaden National Liberation Front saying it hoped his death may usher in a new era of stability and peace and Al-Shabaab that it was celebrating the uplifting news. Topic. Personal life Melis acquired an MBA from the Open University of the United Kingdom in 1995 and a Master's of Science in Economics from the Erasmus University of the Netherlands in 2004. In July 2002, he received an honorary doctoral degree in political science from the Hanum University in South Korea. Melis Zanawi was a follower of the Christian Orthodox faith, and he was a member of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church from his baptism at birth till his death. Melis was married to Azeb Mesfin, a former rebel fighter in the TPLF and, as of 2013, a member of parliament. Melis was the father of three children. Topic. Legacy Topic. Titles, awards and honors Prime Minister Melis received various international awards for setting up a good foundation for the development of Ethiopia. 
Even though Ethiopia remains one of the poorest countries in the world, the near double-digit annual economic growth rate recently is seen as the beginning of Ethiopia's long marathon struggle to eliminate poverty. Acknowledging the rapid GDP growth of the country, the UK newspaper The Economist said in December 2007 that, "...Ethiopia's economy has been growing at record speed in recent years." In 2008, the International Monetary Fund IMF described the speed of Ethiopia's economic growth in recent years as the "...fastest for a non-oil exporting country in sub-Saharan Africa." With Ethiopia ranked as the second most attractive African country for investors, although many opposition parties and parliamentarian critics disagree, some Ethiopians also portray the arrival date of Meli's government, the 28th of May 1991, Jinbat as the birth of democracy in Ethiopia, while diplomats and analysts say the country is slowly moving towards democracy. Before he joined the medical faculty of Addis Ababa University, Prime Minister Meles was awarded the Haile Selassie I Prize Trust, a highly selective award given only to the most outstanding graduating students. The Rwanda government awarded Meles Rwanda National Liberation Medal, the Uruti, in July 2009 for helping to liberate Rwanda and end the genocide in the country. Alongside two other African leaders, Meles was also given Rwanda highest accolade, the Umarinzi Medal, Rwanda Campaign Against Genocide Medal. PM Meles Zanawi was awarded the World Peace Prize for his contributions to global peace and his effort to stabilize the Horn of Africa through cooperation with Intergovernmental Authority for Development IGAD. Tabor 100, an African-American entrepreneurs' organization, honored PM Meles for his contribution toward economic and social transformation in Africa with its prestigious Crystal Eagle International Leadership Award in April 2005. Tabor 100, a U.S.-based nongovernmental organization, calling Meles Zanawi, "...international leader of the year 2005," also honored the efforts of the Ethiopian government in general for its war on poverty and backwardness. PM Meles was awarded the Good Governance Award of the Global Coalition for Africa for leading Ethiopia along a democratic path during the challenging period of transition. He was selected for the Good Governance Award by the U.S.-based Corporate Council on Africa. PM Meles received the Norway-based 2005 Yara Prize for Green Revolution Yara for initiating a good foundation for economic progress in Ethiopia, particularly in the agricultural sector, where the poor country has doubled its food production. During the award ceremony held in the Norwegian capital of Oslo on 3 September, the director of the UN Project for Africa said, "...with our support, Ethiopia can lift itself from poverty and hunger. Under Prime Minister Meles the country has created the grassroots structure to enable this to happen." Meles was given the Africa Political Leadership Award of 2008 by the US-based newspaper, Africa Times. Previous winners of the award include Desmond Tutu, Nelson Mandela and others. Ethiopia's military honored Prime Minister Meles for his leadership during the 1998–2000 war with its northern neighbor when Eritrea invaded Ethiopia in 1998. Residents of the historic and ancient UNESCO town of Aksum in Ethiopia honored Prime Minister Meles for his political and diplomatic leadership role in the return and re-erection of the obelisk of Aksum after a 68-year stay in Rome, Italy. Meles received a Gold Order of Merit Award from the Confederation of African Football in February 2007. PM Meles was given the CAF organization's highest award for his services in advancing the progress of African football. Ethiopia was one of the founding countries of the CAF 1957 and the organization, with the dedication of O leaders like Meles, was celebrating the International Year of African Football in 2007. Topic. Positions Meles was a co-chairperson of the Global Coalition for Africa GCA. .The Global Coalition for Africa brings together senior African policy makers and their partners to deepen dialogue and build consensus on Africa's priority development issues. Prime Minister Meles served as the chairman of the Organization for African Unity OAU, now the African Union, O, from June 1995 to June 1996. In 2007, the African Union elected Meles to chair the Executive Committee of the NEPAD the New Partnership for Africa's Development. 
Melis was chosen to represent Africa at the G8 summit and the G20 summit in London. In February 2010, the UN named Ethiopian Prime Minister Melis as co-chair of the Advisory Group on Climate Change Financing, a new high-level UN Advisory Group on Climate Change Financing. Topic. Milestones Several social, economic, religious and political developments and systems were established for the first time in Ethiopia under Meli's rule. First regional referendum for peaceful secession Eritrea, 1991. First multi-party national election for opposition 2000, 2005, 2010. First institutionalized linguistic freedom at local level 1994. First ethnic-based federalism since 1994. First private media outlets in Ethiopian history since 1994. First consecutive double-digit GDP growth, International Monetary Fund since 2006. First multi-party parliament with opposition MPs since 2000. First unrestricted freedom of religion for evangelicals, Pentecostals since 1994. A Pentecostal succeeded him in 2012. Topic. Foundation Melis was given the Green Revolution Award and a financial prize of $200,000 by the Norwegian Yara Foundation in September 2005, "...in recognition of past accomplishments and encouragement to achieve economic development for the people of Ethiopia." Melis donated his $200,000 financial award to a foundation called, "...free." Addis Ethiopia Women Fund. Free Addis Ethiopia Yesatok Merja Mahiber. The Free Addis Ethiopia Women Fund has an objective to empower girls through providing educational opportunities, and it currently supports 514 needy and orphan rural girls to pursue their education throughout the country. Topic: <inaudible> Bibliography. <inaudible> 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 The Eritrean Struggle, From Where to Where, 1980 African Development, Dead Ends and New Beginnings 2006. Agricultural Development-Led Industrialization ADLI Strategy Topic. Media appearances Motherland, Film 2010 Teachers TV Interview Al Jazeera Interview Topic. See also Ethiopian Orthodox Azeb Mesfin Germa Wald Georgis Haile Selassie Johans III Tokyo International Conference on African Development TICADIV, 2008. Blanco Chavite, Manuel. Diario de Etiopia, Madrid, Vosa Ediciones, 1991. Topic. Quotations They don't want to see a developed Africa. They want us to remain backward to serve their tourists as a museum." In response to critics of Hydro Dam and other development projects. I regret the deaths but these were not normal demonstrations. You don't see hand grenades thrown at normal demonstrations. On post-election issue. Africa's downfall has always been the cult of the personality. And their names always seem to begin with M. We've had Mobutu and Mengistu and I'm not going to add Melis to the list." Dimbleby questioning Melis on his exposure to the people. We have taken measures and beefed up our defense capabilities around the border since December to prevent any miscalculation by the other side. Post Eritrean Ethiopian war complications, countries pretend their foreign policy is based on democratization when this is clearly not the case. For all the challenges in Zimbabwe, for example, it is a bit of a stretch to say it is less democratic than some of the sheikdoms of the Gulf. But none of the sheikdoms has a problem visiting Europe. Melis Zanawi's response about European sanctions and travel ban on Zimbabwe's Mugabe if it is presumed that the Kenyans will democratize in order to eat the peanuts of development assistance from the European Union, it would be a big mistake. Melis Zanawi's reaction to European threat of sanctions on Kenya. Democracy is the expression of a sovereign people. 
To impose it from outside is inherently undemocratic. Melly's interviewed by The Guardian It's true we have our disagreements on border issues, we have disagreements on trade and related issues, but you don't go invading a country whenever you have a dispute on trade issues. We have more civilized mechanisms on resolving such problems. After Eritrea's attack on Mekel, Ethiopia, America didn't give us any money because of Somalia intervention. This doesn't mean America hasn't given us food aid or money for HIV prevention before. It certainly has. But we aren't going to fight Somalia using condoms. Melis's reply to MP Bolcha Demex's teasing question on whether America gave financial support to Ethiopia for the Somalia intervention. This is not your run of the mill demonstration. This is an orange revolution gone wrong. PM Melis accusing opposition parties for the violence. I have never heard of any convincing reason as to why we should privatize land at this stage, part of PM Melis' controversial reply to Dr. Abdul Mejid Hussein. The violence has marred the image of Ethiopia. The worst is clearly behind us and we do not expect any such violence in the near future. On post-election events, even when we obey international laws after exhausting all peaceful means, some countries might not support our move to defend Ethiopia because of their own national interests or diplomatic rationale. So what do we do? Two choices, either we seat and welcome our enemies to invade our homes or we stand up for ourselves. I hope Parliament chooses the second option, we don't need the blessing of other nations to defend our country. Meli's speaking to Parliament about Somali Islamic courts, from Amharic translation. I am proud to be an Ethiopian. I am proud to be a part of that history. Meli's speaking to American intellectuals about Ethiopia and its history. When they Somali jihadists control the whole of Somalia it would be very naive to assume that they will mend their ways, cease to be terrorists and become very civilized and very tame pussycats, interview with AP on Somali extremists. As we respond to the assault of our enemy and defend our country, we must never break international laws. Crime cannot be solved by more crime. Melis Zanawi speaking to Parliament 23 November 2006, from Amharic translation. We believe the problem between ourselves and Eritrea will have to be resolved through dialogue, but it takes two to tango, on border dispute with Eritrea the rest of the contextual factors have no relevance whatsoever to the investigative process. Indeed, they remind me of the famous Tina Turner song. What's love got to do with it? Melis Zanawi's response to EU EOM implying Mrs. Anna Gomez's alleged contradicting accusations. So why don't you give them additional concessions? We said, what concessions? Concessions from our sovereignty? That has never been done by any government in Ethiopia in 3,000 years, that is the only thing of great value what we have inherited from our past, our unflinching determination to keep our country independent even if we are dying of hunger, response to EU's demands for Eritrea while they are entitled to their own opinion, this government and this country are incapable, unwilling and unable to be run like some banana republic from Capitol Hill. It is very worrisome that some of these individuals appear to have entertained such views, in response Representative Donald Payne's pressure for Hailu Shawal and Co. References External links Biography Column Archive at The Guardian Appearances on C-SPAN Melis Zanawi on IMDb Works by or about Melis Zanawi in Libraries' WorldCat Catalog <laughs>